What's up guys, today we are on the roof of my 2021 TRD Off-Road 4Runner and as you can see there is no cross rails and there are the factory side rails. And anyway, one of the first mods I wanted to do to this rig is to um, add some cross rails to give some functionality to the roof. Um, so I decided on some LFD cross rails and I uh, was pretty impressed with some of the things I had read and some of the things I had um, seen on online about people installing these on their fifth gens. First impression so far is it just doesn't look like it was boxed really well. Um, I can already tell there's some damage. Um, the powder coating is scratched off, unfortunately. So I figured I'd go ahead and make a video start to finish getting the box, opening it and installing it and giving him my thoughts. Um, but that, that is, uh, could be unfortunate of pa packaging or could also be the handling came from FedEx. So, you know, it, you never know what happens in, in transit, but so far that's what I've seen. So, uh, next thing is I'm going to open up this box and, uh, we'll get started. So I guess after opening the box, it is boxed pretty nicely. So I'm going to lean more towards, it was probably FedEx that probably either dropped this box incredibly hard or maybe set something on top of it and that crushed it a little bit but yeah it looks like lfd did a pretty good job of putting foam in here and kept the bar separate even got a good wedge um it looks pretty good so um i guess now what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll take the contents out of the box and i'll show you everything that comes with it i will say after taking the contents out of the box it's kind of weird that's like they cut a hole out of the foam and oddly enough that's exactly where i poked a hole through the box doesn't seem to re really make much sense there um and unfortunately it did damage the powder coat it did damage the powder coat here and if you look it bent the ear it also scratched the powder coat a little bit up here damaged it pretty badly up here and there's dents and dings all down the fairing. Um, honestly, I'm going to be beating this up anyways based off the use. And there's another nick in the powder coat there. It's just a little disappointing that it came banged up already straight out of the box. But I guess it is what it is. Like I said, I'm going to be using it and putting throw, throwing stuff on it. So it is what it is. But... I'm not going to send it back. I'm just going to unbend this tab and throw it on the roof and call it a day. But I think, uh, I think LFD, if you do see this video, it'd probably be a good idea to maybe add some more foam. Um, because I don't know if it was done prior to, or it definitely does look like it was done in transit, but it's kind of to be expected. Heavy box is going to get thrown around, so but that's the extent of the damage. Um, yeah, so like I said, I'm gonna unbend this ear, clean it up a little bit, maybe even throw some paint on these dinged up places so it doesn't rust, and then, uh, yeah, overall though, I mean, everything looks pretty solid. Looked at some of the welds, they look good. Um, I did inquire with them prior to uh, finalizing my purchase because on their website it shows a picture of the old fairing which actually doesn't have these indentations um, but I saw another YouTube video where a guy installed this and I noticed that his actually had these cutouts if I could flip it I'll do it this way if you can see better um, and that allows the channels on the roof to um, to let this sit flush and then I just noticed there's more powder coat coming off so Again, a little disappointed on that, but it is what it is. But like I was saying, uh, with the um, powder coating, or not the powder coating, but the channels, um, you can see there, those two in the middle is where this is going to um, allow this to sit flush, which is nice. So in the box, uh, they did include a seal, um, which I know goes on the base of this fairing um creates more of a an air dam or seal um for the air and then it looks like they also included 
um, a five mil hex key, and it actually says included. That's a nice touch, and it has um, installation instructions. White Forerunner, which is neat because um, I have a white Forerunner. Um, and then they have the T bolts. Um, so yeah, looks like it's all stainless hardware at least, so that shouldn't rust. Um, but yeah, so I'll uh, I'll be installing this tomorrow. I uh, went ahead and purchased a uh, moving pad from Harbor Freight just to throw up on the the roof to protect things um, while I'm installing it to avoid any uh, dents and dings and scratches to the car. Uh, but like I said, I may come back and touch some of these dents and dings and stuff up with some paint um, just to, again, keep it from rusting because I is steel after all so you just want to avoid uh avoid any uh rust but yeah so first impressions not bad um impressed with the build quality for sure a little disappointed with um the the carrier and how it was handled but i guess it is what it is all right so like i said um we'll cut to the next scene and i'll get this thing installed what's up guys so like i said before we're going to get started with the installation um despite the uh the damage received in shipping i don't think it's going to interfere with um the quality of the product and certainly not the functionality and once i get those tabs bent it'll come up against the factory rails just fine um but one thing i am going to do real quick is uh i'm going to give the roof a quick wipe down with um some cleaner uh, just to make sure that it is as clean as can be before I put these rails in. That way, um, I don't have to worry about cleaning them after the fact. Because I know once the rails are in, it's going to cause a little bit of interference with cleaning the roof from here on out. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to get the camera set up and then uh, we'll get this insulation underway. All right, and so as you can tell from the time lapse, we got the roof all cleaned up. Um, some people might skip this step. Um, this foreigner is virtually brand new. It's only got a thousand miles on it, so I'm trying to keep the paint nice and protected. Uh, if you're curious what I'm using, I use Grits uh, Spray-On Car Wash. Works great, and like it says, gives it a high gloss wash. Um, does a really good job. Um, there's already a factory coating on this car. Um, so I'm not too terribly worried about um, paint protection at this time, but I do plan probably twice a year to take the rails off um, and apply a coat of wax or ceramic coating. Um, and then I also used, to apply the grits, a really soft towel. Um, I used this on my other car. Um, this is just a cheap edgeless towel from Chemical Guys, um, but it works really great and it ensures you don't scratch the paint. Um, so now, Next step is I'm going to switch it back over to a time lapse. I'm going to throw the uh, moving pad up there to protect the roof, like I said before. And then I'm going to lay the rails out. And then I'll get started with the installation. Okay, so I wanted to get that side um, started before I started the video again, just to make sure I got the hang of this. But essentially, one modification I did make is I started to put a towel underneath because this uh, moving pad isn't quite wide enough. Um, I wished I had paid a little bit better attention to that when I was buying it at Harbor Freight, but it's okay. In the kit, they give you um, four individually packed baggies, and I would assume each bag goes to each rail because it has just enough hardware for each. Um, they also have these locking washers, which on the instructions it tells you they should already be put together, but if they do become separated, I had like one that was separated, tells you how to put them back together. Um, for me, um, the positioning of the rails is pretty much a matter of uh, personal preference, but I'm trying to stay close to the 
um, suggestion from Toyota on the tops of these rails. Um, there's a sticker that says for um, optimal wind noise, position them here. And so I'm trying to keep them as close to that window as possible. And since I've only got four rails, um, or I should say, since I have four rails instead of two, I have a little bit more flexibility on how close together I can put these. Um, because typically I'm used to only having two rails anyways. So the other two are just extra support um, for me. Um, so what I ended up doing is I put this rail as close to the back of the mounting point as you can for the rail. And then I'm going to try to measure um, anywhere between 9 and 10 inches, depending on where it puts me, between each bar and just have them evenly spaced. I feel like that would be the, uh, the best for me and what I'll have planned for this. And um, the only other uh, suggestion I have is um, the kit from LFD does come with an Allen wrench, a really good one, um, which is a nice touch. Uh, for me, I had an Allen socket, and so I just threw that on my ratchet, and um, that allowed me to uh, put these on a little bit easier, in my opinion. Um, and I can also get it a little bit tighter. Um, they do um, kind of put in there a couple times that you need to make sure these are tight, of course, because you don't want these flying off on the highway. Um, but yeah, I did, like I said, add a towel, um, just so when I'm installing these, if they fall, they're not dinging up the roof and stuff. Um, but yeah, so far it's straightforward. I'm going to bolt this one in, like I said, and then I'm going to measure the distance between these two. I'm going to get those as close as I can, um, all the way through, and, uh, we'll just keep on rolling. So now I'm going to just switch to a time lapse, and, uh, we'll knock this thing out. Okay, so the last rail that I'm installing is the front one. And one of the things that made me uh, go with this kit from LFD is the fact that this fairing is built into the cross rail. It's not an extra thing that clips on. Um, it's not a thing that you kind of like fabricate. It's one solid piece and it just makes it look so much cleaner. And like I said, one of the design changes they just did was, because um, this was still a new product for them just a few months ago, uh, from my understanding, but they already made some changes to it. And one of those changes is this groove right here. And there's two of them. And that's for the roof channels. Um, I really think that's a nice touch because all that does is allows it to sit more flush to the roof. Um, and it's just those little things like that that just, you know, kind of separates uh, this rack from a lot of others. Um, so, yeah, last two steps we have to do before we can mount this on the roof like we did the other three is we have to put this weather stripping down on the bottom of this. Um, for where it makes contact with the roof and importantly we have to install the sticker i debated about even putting this on maybe even throwing it on the back window but decided you know what let's just throw it on the actual rack um uh, just to give it a little bit of a pop and uh, you know represent these guys because I, I think they did a good job um the unfortunate thing is you know the shipping but uh, not really their fault i mean stuff happens but yeah, so uh, like I said, I'm going to throw this weather stripping on. Um, I'm probably going to have to fight with it a little bit. I've seen another video where you kind of have to, you know, play with it a, a little bit just to get it to conform to the shape of uh, the fairing. But once I do that, I'll uh, throw it back up to a time lapse. And I will uh, show this being installed. And then after it's installed, I will uh, do a quick wrap-up video and uh, tell you... Some of the tips and tricks I came up with along the installation. Okay, so the weather stripping actually went on a little bit easier than I uh, thought it would. Uh, I will say it's like a small amount too short. Um, I mean, I like to put mine flush. I got it all the way down, and it was just a little bit too short. I've seen other videos that it was too long, so I guess it is what it is. Not the end of the world. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a nice touch. Like I said, it's going to make it more flush to the roof and hopefully deflect more wind than some of the other products that i've seen um one thing i am going to do uh, before throwing this up there is wiping this weather stripping off i did notice on the um instructions it does say optional install a strip of 3m clear paint protect film 
um, where this makes contact. And I can see that as being a great idea because, you know, driving through mountains or dirt roads and stuff and like sand and whatnot, if it gets in between this seal and the paint, it could start um, scratching it. Or if this moves in any way, um, it can certainly rub through the paint. So that that is a good idea. And I probably will try to find uh, some of that uh, paint protect uh, film and probably take this back off and install that just like I said this is a new forerunner I want to keep it nice so um, might be one of those things I do later on but we'll see but yeah last thing is to uh, install the sticker and I guess this is really just a preference thing I mean I've seen them on the left hand side I've seen them on the right hand side I haven't seen them in the middle I don't know that I'll do that though probably just stick it to the, the left um, but yeah, and then, like I said, weather stripping contoured, uh, contours to the shape of this pretty well. I mean, you can even still see the indentations, like I said, for the roof channels. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to throw this back on a time lapse. We'll get this guy installed, and um, I'll go over some of the, the tips and things that I came up with while I was installing it. And I'll, uh, I'll follow up later on with a long-term review after I've had this on there for a couple months to let you guys know how it's holding up and uh, tell you if I still uh, think it was a good purchase or not. I did want to come back and show, uh, I actually put the sticker on the right-hand side. I don't know if it's OCD or not, but I went and looked at the Yakima rack I have for my car, and their logo is on the right. It looks nice, and so I went as far as getting the LFD uh, logo flush to the seal and use that as a base and I got it just to where it starts to flare down um, and then got the peak of the mountain just before it goes over um, but yeah I think it gives it a clean look so now I'm gonna switch to the time lapse and uh, throw this thing on the roof Okay guys, so I got all four of them installed. Looks pretty good. Um, in my case, there is a little bit of a gap here. Um, I honestly think they could probably make this fairing a little bit longer. Put another indentation on this one and uh, it would um, probably have the same effect as the one in the middle, but I think as far as a wind fairing, I think this is gonna do great. Um, for me, only having the four, I, choose, I chose to do 10 inch spacing between each bar um, and that seemed to work out pretty good for me. Um, I think it has enough space between that I can fit my hand in when I'm uh, mounting stuff underneath um, and I think it gives it enough distribution across the roof. Uh, one of the things that made me want to set this a little bit back and instead of having it up against here is on the side over there i don't know if you can see it um there's a sticker that's right here on the back and the front and it's toyota's recommendation for putting uh cross rails for when they're not in use uh to cut down on wind noise i think since this has a fairing i'm not going to experience that much anyways um, but trying to keep it as close to that recommendation as possible because i don't intend to take this off uh, i'm probably going to run this all the time um some people may say yeah it's gonna hurt gas mileage but it's a forerunner um it, it it's not really known for gas mileage i'm sure you can argue this might knock it down a point or half a point or two but it's not going to win any competitions in the miles per gallon range so i'm going to just leave this up here frankly because it, it is kind of time consuming to get this up here and get the spacing right and everything um two tips i'll recommend and i think they recommend it in their instructions but these are mounted with T-nuts that go into the channel over there. I would run the, obviously put the washer on the bolt and then put the T-nut on the end and then run the T-nut down to where there's just enough space for it to fit in this channel and fit between the rack itself. Um, it just makes insulation a lot easier. I got them to where they were snug but not tight and then i went around to the other side and put did the same thing over here and this allows you to move the bar into your position um while it's in the track and that helped tremendously um get 
everything set up um but yeah i mean i think long term i'm definitely going to be putting like max tracks and different things up here uh, i don't know if i'll put a rooftop tent up here or not one thing i did notice if i was going to put a rooftop tent is if you have the later fifth gens i'm not sure when they started doing the shark fin but if you have the shark fin i have noticed that um this pretty much hits the shark fin so if you were to put a flat platform such as a rooftop tent up here uh you're probably gonna have to put some spacers or something on the tops of these otherwise you'll wind up hitting that um shark fin not the end of the world um i think if you had some like rubber pucks um or washers uh that could step it up just enough to get over that i don't think it'd be the end of the world um but let me get a level and i'll show you what i'm talking about okay so my garage isn't completely level anyways but they give you an idea that's sitting flush on that and it has a slight slope so if you were going to put a rooftop tent um i can definitely tell you that's gonna cause a little bit of interference but it's really so small that like i said i think a small like rubber spacer or a couple washers could probably bump it up just enough that it'll uh, elevate it i do know some rooftop tents actually have the brackets on the floor of them and even that sitting on top of these may push it up just enough that you don't even have to worry about it but just one thing i noticed um if you do intend to mount something flush on here such as like a piece of plywood um i know i go to home depot quite a bit so that's not out of the realm of possibility but just something to think about uh, when you're looking at this rack and like i said my floor isn't completely level so this is a tad bit off but i do know that the level the floor slopes just a touch towards the front um i think they may have done that for water honestly but yeah it uh it's pretty pretty flush if i was on flat ground but yeah overall pretty pretty uh impressed with the quality of this rack i don't have any doubt that it's going to hold up i think the powder coating uh, that they chose uh was great um i mean I, it got really abused in transit i can tell you that based off of the condition of the box um and it still held up pretty well i mean there's some scuffs and stuff um just from the damage and i have reached out to lfd to ask them what they would use to just touch this up because i mean i think it'd be a good idea to touch it up from time to time anyways from use because since it is steel it is um prone to rusting if it doesn't have a protective coating on it but yeah also my forerunner has the uh the blacked out decals and so it came with the blacked out roof rack and so black powder coating on the cross rails it just really sets it off but i think it looks good um the only other recommendation i would uh, suggest kind of like i did in the beginning of this video is get a moving pad um this particular moving pad is from harbor freight um and i can't think of the size um trying to remember let me see if i can find the okay, package. so i did find the packaging for the uh, harbor freight moving pad i got a 40 inch by 50 um if you got just a couple inches longer in either direction it wouldn't hurt particularly on the width side i think the lengthwise it's fine um because when it was fully unraveled it was virtually perfect it got all the way up to here and all the way back there um, but uh, just a tad bit too short to fully cover um, both edges. Um, I compensated by just putting some microfiber towels. Um, completely up to you. I mean, if your forerunner is banged up, you might not care. But um, like I said, mine's pretty new, so I still want to kind of protect it as much as I can for the time being. Obviously, no, it's going to get uh, banged up as we use it and take it off-roading and camping and things like that. But um that that and uh the t-nut suggestion uh and maybe switching to the socket based allen uh, may make it a little bit easier just keep in mind these are stainless steel um so you can easily strip them um and so you don't want to have that happen so it might be worth using the allen key that they give just to prevent that um just for me um installing it by myself it did make it a little bit easier having that socket though but yeah hopefully this has been helpful um again this is the lfd cross rail rack um i did look like online if i ever decided to remove the factory rails and want to do the full length rack um, these cross rails actually fit their full length rack uh, and so all i'd have to buy is actually the cross rails uh, or the side rails and then a handful more of these cross rails and then i would have the complete rack which i thought was kind of cool it gives you a little bit more flexibility um, as you decide to expand um, your roof rack 
so yeah uh hopefully this was helpful uh if it was please like subscribe uh, if i could do anything better in the next video uh, throw it in the comment below i'm always looking for feedback thanks guys